This video is sponsored by Squarespace. The 28mm lens isn't actually a 28mm. The auto white balance hasn't got a clue what it's doing. The little black bar that pops up on the LCD screen, that's annoying. And the crop modes, I think that's a little bit gimmicky. So yeah, let's talk about the Leica Q2. I bought the Leica Q2 about three months ago and I thought I'd just share my experience with you and also answer your questions that you sent in on Instagram. I want to be as objective as possible and I feel like the honeymoon phase is definitely over so I want to approach this video as if we're just sat in a coffee shop chatting about it. The image quality is absolutely outstanding. On three separate occasions, I showed people the back of the camera and they replied in some kind of way, whoa, that is sharp, and just verbally expressed their surprise. These are by far some of the best files I've ever worked with. Bringing the photos up on a big screen, editing them in Lightroom, the files are just beautiful. The two things that are contributing to that image quality, number one, obviously the sensor, and number two, the lens. I've heard people saying that the Q2 is entirely worth it just for that 28 millimeter lens. If you wanted an equivalent 28 millimeter Summilux lens, that's gonna cost you about 5,000 pounds. So it's funny that you can get the 28 millimeter Summilux F1.7 for cheaper, but it's attached to the body of the Q2. That 28 millimeter lens is probably the best 28 millimeter lens I will ever use. Combine that with the 47 megapixel files, the image quality really is what carries this camera, even though it does have some faults. Talking about the beautiful optics, let's talk about the infamous Leica look. Now, I don't know exactly what that is, and I know Peter McKinnon described it as a vibe, so that's not very detailed either. And I was in the Leica store last week, and I asked an employee there what is the Leica look when we were chatting about cameras and stuff, and he couldn't give me an explanation either. But after a little bit of research, I think it's a mix of things, some of that being the deep blacks, the rich colors, but mainly the shallow depth of field. Bear in mind that if you're shooting at 28 millimeter, you're not gonna get the same characteristics and subject isolation as a longer focal length. But using the Leica Q2 at 28 millimeter, if I had to describe the like a look. When I'm shooting at f1.7, f2, f2.8, the focus fall off is just absolutely stunning. The bokeh and shallow depth of field kind of looks dreamy. I know that's hard to describe, but it has its own characteristic. And it looks so good that I've noticed myself taking more photos of just everyday details that are around me. Let's talk about something here that a lot of people seem to complain about when it comes to the Leica Q2. A lot of people think that the 28 millimeter actually feels more like a 24 or a 26. My opinion on that is that I don't really have one because I still use the 28 millimeter for 28 millimeter situations, whether it is a super wide environmental shot or it's a close up detailed hectic street scene where I'm trying to fill the frame. Whatever you wanna label the focal length, I still think it looks great. I'm not saying that all these people claiming the 28 millimeter isn't a 28 millimeter are lying. Obviously there's a recurring theme here if multiple people have mentioned it, but I think this only becomes a problem when you're not happy with the results. If you're using a 28 millimeter lens and it looks as it should, and then you pick up a Q2 and it doesn't look as it should and it feels a bit weird, I can see why that might be a problem. But for me, I don't mind. I think the photos look good. Yes, you have to take into consideration distortion and the character of a wide lens, but whether it's a 24 or 26 or 28, whatever label we give this, the photos look great and I don't have any qualms with it. The digital zoom and cropping feature feels a little bit pointless. For those that don't know, you can bring up 35, 50 and 75 millimeter frame lines. And then when you take the photo, you get that cropped version of your image. Now the raw file does restore the whole 28 millimeter focal length, so that's cool. But when you use a 50 millimeter crop, it doesn't look like a 50 millimeter lens because it has none of the characteristics or compression of one. So you're just cropping in on a 28 millimeter file, which is fine because we know when we buy the camera, it's a 28 millimeter lens. So we shouldn't try to replicate any other focal length, if that makes sense. And I don't mind people cropping either. I crop on my images. So it's not an issue with the crop itself. It's just, why would you say that it's 75 millimeter when it's just not? 
it doesn't look like a 75 millimeter. It looks like a 28 millimeter that's cropped. I don't know, maybe some people like it. Maybe it helps with people's compositions and some people just like knowing that that's what 50 millimeter would look like, but I'm still gonna use the Q2 as a 28 millimeter because that's what it is. So the 35, 15, 75 millimeter frame lines, I don't know, seems pointless to me. We will get back to the video in just a second, but I wanted to quickly share with you today's sponsor, Squarespace. I have personally been using Squarespace as the all-in-one place to run my online business. With hundreds of beautiful templates to choose from, creating a space online that feels like your own has never been easier. I use Squarespace to sell my presets, organize and showcase my photography, and to recently share more personal work with my audience via a weekly newsletter. I cannot recommend Squarespace enough, so why not at least start a free trial and see what you think. After that, when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Mike Chudley to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Now let's get back to the video. Talking about the auto white balance, it's just awful, pretty much unusable. If I'm looking in one direction, the auto white balance will display it as a bit cold and blue. And I'll just move like 10 yards and it'll change to a warm temperature. I've never seen such a unpredictable auto white balance in a camera before. For me, it's not a massive problem because I just set my white balance anyway. When I go out and do street, I'll just check the weather and use the cloudy or daylight temperature or even set a custom Kelvin itself. And then I'll just leave it for the most of the day unless the weather changes dramatically. So it's definitely a first world problem and it has not affected me using the camera at all. I just don't use auto white balance as simple as that and I just get on with it. But um, I imagine some people People will buy the camera and realize why is the auto white balance so dodgy it's just not great and for a camera that's so expensive i thought it was worth mentioning something else that's really annoying on the q2 is the little black bar and i'm sure many of you have heard people mention this before but if you half press your display settings will come up and actually get in the way of your composition that's wild to me why does it do that Every other camera on the LCD screen, it's set to the side or it's below or it's above. So your display settings should never get in the way of what you're actually framing. The only way I've got around this and the reason it's not a massive issue for me is I bring the camera up to my eye quite a lot. So when I look through the EVF, this isn't an issue. The display settings are not in the way of your composition. But when you're looking on the LCD screen, the black bar does get in the way. So if you use the screen a lot, that's a pain. Fortunately for me, I'm using the, the electronic viewfinder loads. So uh, the, yeah, the display settings are never an issue, but why is that even a thing in the first place? So yeah. Another little problem with the Q2 is that the battery life is not good. Solution to that is buy another battery, except for the fact that they're 130 pounds, which I'm a victim of because, you know, if I'm doing street all day in London, I don't just want to keep turning my camera on and off. I like to keep it on ready, especially if I'm in a scene where lots going on. So yes, my battery drains quite a bit and I did have to go to the like store and buy a new battery. So now I have two and that's fine. I've spent many a days, eight or nine hours in London and two batteries is good enough. I've not actually got through the second battery, so that's fine. But everyone uses their cameras different. You might be able to make one battery work, but whatever the case, a new battery was 130 pounds, which is annoying again, but I guess that's just a Leica thing. So uh, I should get used to it. I feel like I can't make this video about the Q2 without mentioning just how beautifully well-made the camera is. In regards to comparing Leica cameras with others, I just think it's no competition. The little things like adjusting the shutter speed, switching the camera on and off, moving the aperture ring, it honestly feels incredible and you can see the attention to detail and German engineering that's put into these cameras. They look and feel amazing. So I've opened up your questions on Instagram about the Q2 and I'm just gonna quick fire some answers. Are you scared to drop it? Uh, a little bit at first I was, but not anymore. <laughs> Luke Palms asks, for you, in brackets, F what everyone else says slash thinks, was it worth the investment? Yes, yeah, it was. It's my favorite camera. I can't wait to pick it up almost every day. I don't know how much complaining it sounds like I've done in this video, but 100% um, is definitely worth the investment. Andrew asks, is this the end camera where you can't imagine needing to use another camera? No, I was in the Leica store the other week and the M6 is gorgeous. Uh, the M10, M11, they're fantastic cameras. They're on the wish list. So no, even though I've bought the Q2, I'll probably buy more. It's just 
the way life is. Prince POV asks, have you missed slash used the X100V in the three months? Yes, I use the X100V two or three times a week. If I'm just going out on a casual walk or if I'm walking to the gym or if I'm just doing something low key, the X100V is way more pocketable, so that's easy to bring with me. But if I'm going out to do a full day of street photography, then the Q2, obviously. Eric asks, do you find yourself wanting the optical viewfinder for out of frame visibility? That's a good point because using the optical viewfinder on the X100V is fantastic. I've not found myself wanting it when using the Q2 because the Q2 doesn't have it, so I just accept that that's the case. But that has made me think about getting an M6 because that is way more analog and yeah, you can reap the benefits of a proper rangefinder that way. Adam asks, does the Leica Magic really exist? Yeah. Harper says, feel nervous walking around the streets with the Rolex of cameras. No, the camera is insured. It's just a tool at the end of the day. So if I was ever in a situation that was dangerous, the camera means nothing to me at that point. In the first week, I questioned like putting it down on surfaces or being anywhere with it because it's expensive. You just gotta be rational about these things. Common sense is needed with street photography. I like to think I'm a pretty safe person and I've got my wits around me to some extent. If something like that stopped you or made you behave in a certain way when out on the streets, then you've got to be aware of that. But no, I use the Q2 like I would the X100V, like I would my iPhone, so yeah. Paul Taylor says, is it that much better than the X100V and is the 28 millimeter easy to get used to? I don't know how you use 28 millimeter, so it's very individual. I think the 28 is great, but you, you might not like it, so it's hard to say. And yes, I think it is that much better than the X100V. This is coming from someone that loved the X100V. I still love it, it's a great camera, but the Q2 really is phenomenal. Juan asks, why would anyone buy that camera for 5,000 pounds? I, I don't know, why would they do that? Devin said, are you gonna get the M6? Probably. Edward asks, how fast does your memory card fill up? This is a good point because the files are massive. I use a 128 gigabyte SD card and I've not filled it um, or even come close to filling it, I think. I've just finished shooting a full day of St. Patrick's Parade in London. So I probably took 600 photos and I will put the raw file information here, but that didn't fill 128 gigabyte. SD card, so that's pretty good. Phil says, is it worth three or four times the cost of the X100V? If you're comparing cameras, then no, it's not. You buy a Leica Q2 knowing that it, it costs that much, if that makes sense. And Leica don't want someone to buy the camera that also is looking at a budget version. Does that make sense? It's a bit like Louis Vuitton don't care that you can buy H&M clothes because Louis Vuitton want Louis Vuitton customers. They're not competing. Is that what I'm trying to say? Rationally speaking, it's not worth three or four times more than the X100V, but it does cost that much. I hope that gives you an idea of where my head is at with the Q2. It really is my favorite camera. I love using it. The results are fantastic. I'm having so much fun shooting street with it and uh, I won't be getting rid of it. I know there's a couple of questions in there from people saying, will I be getting rid of it or was I disappointed? Not at all. I think I'm in this for the long haul and uh, yeah, it's an amazing camera. For me.